Okay. Shall I begin, Connor? Yes, please. Home on the northwest corner border of the country of origin in the pollen heart of a lotus, you attend marvelous, most excellent city, renowned as the lotus born. You are surrounded by a circle of many dakinis. As I practice following in your footsteps, I pray that you approach to confer your blessings. Guru Pema City Home. Do we do it three times? You can sing it. Oh. Sing it, two times. sing it two more times. Hong Worgen Yugi Nam Cham Cham. Pema de Sardong Pola Yasin Shugi no Rune Pema Praise the Shakyamuni Buddha, teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with 
knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, bow destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious ones, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge. When you, chief of men, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fane that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust. Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage. To all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms atoms in all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action, accumulate virtue and goodness, subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds, look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, May I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma, and I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen, and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my yidams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith, accepting these out of your boundless compassion, Please send forth ways of your blessings. Idam, Guru, Ratna, Madalakam, Narate, Nami. The Heart of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time, the Bhagavan was dwelling on massive vultures mountain on Rajakriya, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration 
on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Sharavadaputra. Sharaputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomena. There is no eye element and so on, and up to including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly, completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering, should be known as the truth, since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared, Tayata, gate, gate, peragate, perasumgate, bodhisoha. We'll do that 21 times to ourselves. Tayata, gate, gate, paragate, parasamgate, bodhisoha. Sharputra, the bodhisattva mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom just like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from the concentration and commended the bodhisattva mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, said of the lineage, it is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated. Even the Jatakas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharavadaputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety along with the worlds of gods, humans, Azuras and Gandharvas were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. In accordance with the interests and the faculty of sentient beings, please turn the will of Dharma of the small, great, and common vehicles. Okay.
Ron. Oh. <clears throat> um, it's good to see everyone here, both in person and um, remotely, or closely remotely. Uh, the laws um, of the CDC or the governor has allowed uh, limited uh, in-person church attendance. So uh, we have a few people here uh, way under our quota, but uh, everyone's sitting uh, distance and everyone is masked up. So we're setting a good example. Thank you everybody for being here. It's really something. Um, I'm happy to report that I've received, uh, you know, that my second uh, vaccine uh, about 12 days ago. So in a few days, I'll be in that two week period where I'm supposed to be fully antibodied or immune system. Um, I'm not going to be reckless, but I'm glad uh, to have that. And I'm glad uh, other people in the Sangha uh, are um, becoming vaccinated and moving forward. Um, if uh, you're not going to become vaccinated, then please also be uh, completely careful. Uh, and, uh, you know, you'd still have to follow the uh, masking and distancing. So, and wash your hands. <laughs> All right. So, um, but I'm delighted that uh, some people are here today. It's a beautiful day. Um, um, I'm going to be talking about the second link, um, sometimes called formations <clears throat> today. And I'm going to try to make that relevant. So um, I want to make sure people can hear me first. Uh, so is a thumbs up. OK, good. <clears throat> like to um, always mention that uh, whenever we're giving teachings, I, I try to um, start or hold uh, the view, uh, the capital V, hold the highest view. So uh, teach from the standpoint of Mahamudra and Dzogchen. Um, and uh, notice that uh, whenever we give uh, teachings, we're I'm still assuming or um, uh, encouraging or enticing people to uh, have the foundation teachings and the Mahayana teachings and the Vajrayana teachings uh, very clear, very strong, so that uh, you all can uh, attain Mahamudra City and you can all attain Jalu, the <laughs> rainbow body, uh, and uh, be very helpful bodhisattvas, right? like that. So uh, we do make prayers to become awake, to become uh, Buddha. So uh, that's um, not arrogant to make that aspiration. Uh, it would be arrogant if we have the aspiration without making the effort. But uh, I know that people here and listening are very good practitioners and are making the effort. So uh, being Buddha doesn't mean um, uh, that uh, we look like every other Buddha. Uh, in many of the sutras, Buddhas have different capacities and different names. Um, so uh, whether we're a um, teacup Buddha or uh, an ocean Buddha, whether we're, uh, you know, Yeshi Sogyal or Tara or um, Manjushri, and uh, we all have our capacity to help. So we can help others by serving tea or we can help others by uh, creating uh, Buddha fields, but uh, we can have the same essence, the same Buddha nature, the same uh, capacity to benefit. So because of our karma or become of our situation, uh, you know, we, we may be recognized as great teachers or maybe recognized as great doctors or nurses or therapists or um, monks or nuns, um, or we may not be recognized, but we're still doing the activity. <clears throat> oh, uh, 
I'm still giving these teachings from the standpoint, like the 12 links of dependent origination, uh, from the standpoint of this is how things appear uh, in uh, appearances, how they appear uh, to create the world of uh, frustration or samsara. So um, these, in a sense, are uh, what we call provisional teachings like that. They're not um, uh, teachings that are sometimes we call definitive. So they're provisional like that. For people that are uh, listening in on Monday nights, and we're talking about Buddha nature, um, the wonderful thing about uh, Tibetans, uh, particularly that they inherited from the Indians, is the ability to uh, debate and discuss. So for uh, some people, uh, the Buddha nature teachings of uh, uh, luminous awareness, luminous mind, and be clear uh, mind uh, with unceasing manifestation is uh, um, uh, conventional or um, interpretive teaching. And for some, it's a definitive teaching. So uh, I'm hoping that the people that are uh, listening uh, or reading the book or reading the commentaries don't immediately um, decide like, oh, that's absolute and that's relative because I want to join that uh, you know, soccer club <laughs> or something. I want you all to um, examine your own uh, personal experience based on uh, the teachings, based on what other people uh, with some realization say, based on logic, um, based on uh, karmic results, but uh, ultimately uh, based upon your own experience and realization, right? You have to verify these truths for yourself. So uh, there's um, room for being uh, skeptical, uh, but skeptical with investigation, not um, chronic skepticism. <laughs> like that. So um, uh, we, uh, for some people I've mentioned, um, we're going uh, to be uh, reading or studying um, uh, Mipam's uh, Beacon of Certainty. Uh, uh, to read or study that um, uh, requires uh, a background. Otherwise, you won't know what's being discussed because Mipam was uh, covered all the schools and all the different uh, things. So you, you have to uh, know the players, um, but I'm fortunate that uh, Dirk requested me to give the teachings on that. So um, now that things are opening up a bit more and uh, my health is going to be more stable, uh, that can be uh, accomplished, right? So thank you for that request, Dirk. Yeah. So um, uh, Nipam's particular um, Mm -hmm. close uh, Buddha as Manjushri um, and uh, uh, that's uh, Buddha nature in the uh, form of wisdom. Uh, so that's all big topic, different styles of wisdom. We just chanted uh, that perfection and wisdom uh, Art Sutra and uh, those people have taken uh, uh, refuge with me, have the lineage name, first name, Yeshe, uh, which is uh, uh, primordial. Sometimes we say primordial or alpha wisdom, according to uh, some translators. Uh, the Sanskrit is jhana. So um, jhanic wisdom or Yeshe is the wisdom that both uh, is able to discriminate um, conventional world uh, and have also direct non-conceptual and unmediated um, insight and wisdom and realization. So sometimes we'd say Ayeshe, sometimes we'd uh, say Rigpa, sometimes we'd use other words. 
but uh, the wisdom we're interested in uh, in Lion's Roar is wisdom that is direct and immediate experience combined with the discrimination of seeing the different paths and the different experiences and the practical knowledge of how to bring that about. So we can have strong values, but if we don't know how to put them in practice, if we don't know how to find out what the best method is, then um, all the different teachings uh, will hang together. We want to love everybody, and that's the ultimate loving wisdom, but each person needs love and support in different ways, and that's all. So for that, um, uh, when particularly we're uh, would be studying um, Nipam, just the way studying uh, Sankhava, um, we uh, will try to identify with uh, Manjushri um, and uh, the wisdom aspect of our experience, right? Okay. <clears throat> uh, today I'm adding some uh, uh, resources. Um, to the discussion that I am, um, that would be good. So in uh, formulating this talk, uh, I also wanted to refer to um, the well-known Zen teacher, Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, who has, was a creative way of looking at uh, Dharma. Um, he has a formulation of uh, the 12 links, the 12 Madonnas in a positive way. So I'll read that out at the end. Uh, that that doesn't really um, that doesn't really exist that much in the Tibetan traditions, you know. Uh, so it's Thich Nhat Han from uh, Vietnamese Zen tradition is kind of like to bring him in, and then also uh, I'd like to refer to um, some talks and uh, works of uh, uh, Bhikshuni uh, Tupton Chodron, who uh, we still hope to have a uh, visit. <clears throat> I could spend the whole um, 12 weeks or how many weeks just talking about ignorance, but um, we have to um, know that uh, even though I'm not talking about uh, the misperceived view of reality, the misperceived view of self, and the misperceived view of mind uh, continues throughout uh, the whole 12 things because it describes uh, how things were screwed up or how it came to be that we feel trapped and limited. So even though we think we're not talking about ignorance, uh, the ability to not see things clearly and be awake uh, goes through all of uh, the 12 links. <clears throat> Generally, the second link is um, described as uh, formations or karmic formations. And uh, that's an important uh, second step because it points out that uh, once we uh, missee things, uh, we create uh, a world of conflict. Uh, a world of subject and object, and a world that has consequences. So what I'd like to really uh, emphasize um, today is uh, uh, not seeing things correctly, not seeing who we are correctly, uh, not waking up to uh, our lived experience, uh, which is sometimes my translation for mine, um, does have consequences. Just like a uh, speech uh, has consequences, um, not seeing things clearly has consequences. So um, you'd have to be uh, uh, speaking from tantric point of view or uh, develop uh, Mahamudra point of view to say ignorance is bliss. <laughs> yes, the nature, of, the absolute nature of ignorance has to be bliss, emptiness, awareness, but uh, Eventually speaking, ignorance sucks. So it just creates um, uh, a subject object world that is continually confusing. And from this confusion, uh, the um, very strong uh, emotional uh, energies uh, manifest. And these uh, typically 
are, of course, um, grasping or sometimes called desire and aversion, sometimes we call it anger or hostility. Uh, additional um, uh, strong emotions uh, are pride and envy, like that. Sounds like the seven deadly sins. Uh, we don't we don't include uh, we don't include sloth and glut, gluttony. <laughs> or maybe this could fit in somewhere, right? Yeah, like that. Um, uh, it's important when uh, looking at the uh, Buddhist psychology, so to speak, that uh, we not lose our sense of humor and um, we not become overly depressed. So if we get too immersed in uh, detailing samsara, it will be like um, you, you want to do some therapy. So instead of seeing a therapist or instead of uh, reading some inspirational book or self-help book, you buy yourself uh, a copy of the DSM-5 uh, and then attempt to heal yourself that way. I, I think that would be difficult <laughs> like that. So um, the 12 links is, uh, and uh, many of the Abhidharma teachings are uh, an attempt um, to describe uh, the nature of screwed upness um, without uh, reference to a personal self. So this is the other big point that I want to emphasize, and I probably mentioned it last two weeks ago also, is that um, most of the time we're always saying, you know, uh, my anger, of course, or my issues, or my trauma, or my this, and all the emotions and thoughts and sensations and consciousnesses come back to being owned by a self or controlled by a self or experienced by a self. <clears throat> but uh, the Buddha said, well, um, actually, I didn't find the self. <laughs> so I did find consciousness. I did find emotions. I did find perceptions and thoughts. I, you know, I did find uh, uh, all these things but I didn't find uh, anybody that's controlling them or anybody that's uh, uh, owning them or anybody that actually uh, experiences it. I just found the five skandhas, I just found that. So um, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a year and a half now, Dirk gave a very good talk on the skandhas. So uh, that, that might be something uh, we'll revisit again, you know. Um, I think you may have posted that somewhere, right? I don't know. Did you? No? I, I don't remember for sure. It might be posted on the website. I'll, I'll take a look, okay? Yeah. I'll check. Um, yeah. So uh, 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 the funny part is uh, the Buddha said that um, we, we are just these five heaps, these five activities. Um, and we uh, posit or impute or believe or come to believe there's a truly existing um, person or self that uh, owns them and controls them and interestingly at the same time is independent of them or even weirdly is them and independent of them at the same time. <clears throat> but. Uh, uh, he negated this, he didn't negate uh, that we have all kinds of wisdom and positive qualities. Uh, you know, the consciousness that is normally um, dualistic can evolve into uh, non-dual consciousness and the uh, emotions, uh, even these uh, um, conflicted emotions uh, through practice will evolve into the five Buddhas, right? And um, the uh, pleasant and unpleasant states will evolve into bliss. And the form skanda, uh, we, we will take on the forms of uh, beautiful beings. So uh, these uh, aspects can be transformed. But um, 
we need the wisdom mind to do it and we don't need uh, the self to explain it. So uh, I'm fond of saying that explanations are not insights. So uh, we can't say, well, there's, we have these 12 links and we have them. Um, actually, we don't have them. <laughs> the uh, delusions and the misperceptions, ironically and interestingly, um, uh, are operating uh, on their own. <clears throat> so uh, uh, earlier, uh, I was fortunate to have a discussion with uh, uh, Peter, who's somewhere around here. Uh, and Peter was wondering, like, how, how come there's so many delusional people? Um, I said, well, uh, delusions uh, uh, can keep going. You see, they don't need uh, the, they don't need any personal uh, self. There's no personal break, right? They, they don't eventually come back to a self that says, what am I doing? Uh, we have to bring a wisdom mind. We have to connect with our Buddha nature and our uh, lived experience to do that. Um, but that Buddha nature and that lived experience is not uh, what we would normally think of as a personality or self. So of course, when we say my Buddha nature, um, we have to remember uh, we're saying like, um, that's uh, my sky, <laughs> or that's my outer space. Uh, uh, contrary to most people, we don't own it. <laughs> we are it, but we don't own it. So uh, the ignorance that's um, uh, uh, ongoing and that makes these mistakes does uh, generate without personal will um, the conflicting uh, cognitive uh, energies we call uh, emotions. So emotions are a mix of uh, thoughts and energies that um, you know, in this case, what manifest is hostility and bewilderment and uh, mistaken grasping. So sometimes when people are listening to Tibetan teachers, um, they, uh, they'll say all emotions are bad or don't get emotional. They're actually meaning don't get into conflicting emotions. Don't get into energies where uh, mistaken thoughts and uh, the high energy uh, is mixed together. So. Uh, that's a bad combination. That's like uh, mixing alcohol and uh, <clears throat> uh, narco, uh, opiates and uh, benzos like Xanax. Don't do that, right? <laughs> then, then you lose consciousness. We don't want to do that. So that's what we've done with ignorance. And then it generates um, uh, action that is based on the ignorance. And these are called the karmic formations. So uh, important points are that uh, this is just happening without a personal will or a personal self. And uh, this is uh, important. The ignorance does uh, is dynamic and gives forth to action. So we cannot be uh, blissfully um, uh, full of misknowledge or ignorance. This piece goes forward into our bodhisattva work, meaning if we don't do anything to teach, if we don't do anything to help others, nothing will change. There will not be uh, an automatic wake up. There's not a spring at the bottom. Um, people won't automatically realize that they're nuts. You know, it's like there's, there's no uh, automatic correction because uh, the ignorance in the karmic formation, the second link and the, the action that started from ignorance is not based on uh, a personal will like that. Most of the time from um, Tibetan point of view, uh, when they're talking about the second link, just to be a little scholarly here, um, they're concerned, they're really emphasizing um, creating good karma and creating uh, conditions to not only wake up in this life, but to um, uh, have a beneficial next life. 
So, uh, for example, uh, you know, Venerable Tipton and Chandra are really going to talk a lot about um, how to, uh, you know, avoid karmic situations and that working on this link, so to speak, um, working on our behaviors and our actions um, uh, is, is very important. And uh, this kind of is characterized um, uh, in uh, overall, I would say, in monastic style, there, the emphasis is on your actions first. The emphasis is on notice, notice how you're creating um, good actions, notice how you're creating negative actions. Uh, in um, Tantra style, a little bit, the emphasis is a little bit more on the uh, link that we'll get to the uh, um, the craving and the grasping, so purifying desire, saying that okay, that's where we're going to spend a lot of time, really noticing how we do that and how we get caught and how we liberate it. The um, liberation styles of Mahamudra and Dzogchen um, are going to really emphasize the mind aspect, right? Go right to the ignorance. Let's work there and um, see the, um, you know, the liberated aspect of uh, natural awareness. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, yogi style. We have to do uh, actually all three. <laughs> we have to liberate all the nadanas. And I'll uh, share Thich Nhat Hanh's um, uh, view of that uh, towards the end here. But part of Lion's Roar is like noticing we have different um, lifestyles, we have different uh, emphasis, we have different character structures or Buddha families. And so uh, we have a wide range of techniques. And um, to some degree, um, here I'd like all the uh, students to uh, be familiar with. Um, you know, the, our, all the basic styles we use. Um, you know, I'm not saying mastery, um, but uh, a strong familiarity. So when uh, teaching and helping others, you just don't have one tool in the toolbox, right? Uh, so we don't have just a hammer, we have uh, a whole tool set. Don't you think that's a good idea? Like that. <clears throat> so when we're working on the first Madonna, trying to uh, overcome uh, ignorance. That's very much the path of uh, uh, the yogi. And we have to do that. Um, if we want to overcome the ignorance to work on the karmic side uh, is learning how to get along with others and uh, monastic training. Um, in the West, um, people associate uh, sometimes monastic training with uh, being simple or, um, you know, not not being able to have certain, um, you know, sensory pleasures or something like that. Um, that's true, but actually it's about learning how to get along uh, with others in very close settings. So uh, in monastic training, um, uh, you're just with people, you're just kind of, I call it stuck in the elevator. So um, you learn to get along. So um, it isn't being uh, an itinerant yogi or um, a uh, isolated just monk in retreat or none. It's um, really learning to get it along with others. And that's, that's very difficult, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and then uh, working with desire um, that Nidana, uh, which is uh, in a, uh, number eight, by the way, we'll get there, is very much a uh, householder practice. Because uh, if we don't have uh, correct desire and the correct attachment, uh, then, you know, why live, you know, why have family, why go to work, right? So uh, Tantra actually is very designed for householder life 
um, because it works on balancing desire correctly, like uh, just the right amount of tension, the right amount of uh, desire is just right. So uh, the right amount of chocolate is fantastic. Uh, too much chocolate is not, right? So Tantra particularly uh, uh, talks about relationships where we must use uh, desire, we must have wants, we must have needs. We do want a nice house, we do want to have a pleasant job, we do want to have enjoyable uh, partners, we do want to have nice kids and pets, right? No one says, I want a dysfunctional family, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe unconsciously, but no one says, yeah, I want a, I want a horrible, conflicted family. You know, where, where do I find those? You know? So, uh, <laughs> so um, Tantra is very uh, imaginal and very um, uh, colorful because uh, Tantra is uh, developmental, right? Tantra, particularly the Kala Chakra Tantra, uh, is, takes you all the way from being a child all the way up to being a Buddha. Uh, because as parents, we have to see how uh, children develop. Uh, you can't just say, okay, realize, uh, just meditate. Okay, just realize nature mind. Okay, just behave yourself. We have to teach, right? We have to uh, develop. We have to uh, do um, a bhavana or cultivation is called. So uh, they're not the one-off teachings uh, sometimes of adults. So uh, that's why um, you know, I believe that particularly uh, Tantra and correctly understood is uh, so important for us at the temple. And uh, fortunately, um, you know, our friends and teachers uh, agree with us like that. Tantra is about um, gaining the uh, right amount of energy because you can't do work or do family or have fun or have your dogs or a bicycle without enough energy, right? You need that, and that's Tantra. So um, now that we're opening up the temple um, for uh, some people who want to stay, uh, I'd be willing to um, uh, begin uh, or start up the uh, Salon uh, practices again and share those. Um, sometimes uh, they're they're called Buddhist yoga, but uh, in the tradition we might call them something else. Actually, if uh, in the new uh, schools, new traditions, uh, we say we're doing Anatara Tantra yoga, so we're doing yoga anyway, right? <clears throat> but if people are interested, then on the Sundays that I'm here I'm uh, uh, and people are qualified and willing to uh, get back into the Salon Tiddly practices. I've been really delighted that um, Kansu Ramshe is, uh, uh, you know, talking and introducing people to these um, and uh, giving accurate teachings, of course, and inspiring teachings. So that's been uh, a big help. So I, a shout out to Kansu Ramshe, of course, yeah. <laughs> um, like that. So thank you for the people that tune in um, uh, to Rimshe's talks. Uh, it's really quite a commitment to be on the other side of the world and say, okay, I'm just giving uh, my time, this teaching to uh, a group of people in Sacramento, don't you think? That's quite amazing, really, right? So uh, I want to be able to continue this and uh, before I stop here, like that's why uh, we're putting a lot of effort and money into having a very uh, uh, able and competent uh, audiovisual program so that we we can uh, record and transmit and uh, save uh, you know the teachings so people that are now around the world and will continue to be living in Pennsylvania and New York and Cleveland and um, Mexico and Washington and uh, Nevada uh, can uh, you know share the Dharma there, right? I mentioned before that everyone who's authentically practicing and is uh, 
wants to share dharma, you should say, I'm teaching, then you take responsibility. Even if you're just saying, uh, be kind and don't harm yourself, that's sharing a teaching, right? You're not claiming to be a lama or claiming to be some kind of Rinpoche, just uh, we're sharing dharma and we should all be doing that. So if you can get together with just one other person and do some practice and discussion, uh, uh, then uh, you have a, a dharma group, uh, chotsog, you know, a dharma, dharma uh, gathering, right? Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop here for now and see some uh, questions, comments, uh, or complaints. Okay. <laughs> All right, you're on. Uh, was that me? I couldn't. That's hear. you. Uh, okay. Uh, I just wondered if uh, you would say that formation, if uh, happy Tibetans is a good translation for, for formations, not habitual tendencies. Now, whenever I think of Tibet, after uh, Kempo Sewon Dongyao, it took me a while to understand he was saying habitual tendencies. I thought he was saying happy Tibetans. I like having <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. and he was talked a lot about the bad happy Tibetans. <laughs> but for habitual formations, I always thought uh, habitual tendencies always seem like a good translations yes. to me. I don't know. It is a good, yes. Uh actually habits um are you know fairly good translation for karma. Um the uh the thing I would add would be like um in uh intentional habits that then have a life of their own <laughs> that would be my full kind of karma thing intentional habits that have a life of their own because um uh it's a little bit you know with the ignorance that then uh brings about uh, a dualistic world that then by itself generates a conflicting world has a dynamism to it and even though it might have just been like one moment of being stupid, uh, it it will it will keep on rolling. So um, uh, they you do repeat negative habits, and that that means reinforcing um, the uh, the tendencies. But um, the point is that even when uh, uh, the initial uh action to stop they they the karma will keep going unless something else is done to purify it or liberate it but um yeah happy tibetans is uh <laughs> yeah habitual tendency is very good so habits as everyone knows uh habits um are uh extremely difficult to change so that's why uh there's so much emphasis um uh, on on actually you know healthy habits like that, yeah. But I like happy Tibetans. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Especially the bad happy Tibetans. The bad happy Tibetans. Is, that's it. So, uh, actually, in our tradition, we're very positive. So. Um, we say that there, there isn't anything that can't be purified and liberated. So like that. So the, so they can be bad, happy, and transformed like that. So even bad habits have the capacity to be liberated. So in that way, they're beneficial. <laughs> Bye. I think people can have their hand up, but they don't realize maybe that then they can't hear us, right? Can that happen? They have their hand up, but the mic is up. Oh, they can't hear you. So maybe Andrew can hear me and it's time to talk. But he's on mute. So we can't. Yeah. Okay, to finally technical difficulties are solved. Hi there, Lama. Um, I was I, thinking about while you were talking 
I uh, was just reflecting on several things around ignorance and bad habits and um, habitual tendencies and um, so so much of, of uh, studying the Dharma is, is a self-focused thing it's it's meditation it's reading um, and you know this this uh, ignorance of, of this distinction between self and other and, and I was just really also just reflecting on how much it's crucial like uh, it was that uh, Sartre no exit hell is other people but um, also we can't do this without other people like um, other people point out our habitual tendencies other people kind of save us if you will um, be they a therapist or a lama or a sangha um, and I, I noticed for myself, you know, I'll forget stuff. I'll forget stuff from the Dharma and I'll be reminded either from listening to someone or as I'm talking like right now. Um, and this, so it just seems like there's something dynamic in that engagement with others that I don't know. I, I'm not sure what the question is, but I just wanted you to speak to that, that crucial importance of, um, we have this dualism of self and other, um, but what is the aspect of the other that, that is crucial to our, our uh, lessening mm -hmm. our ignorance, if you will? So, uh, good question. So, when I meet with people in the interview and darshan, um, I ask people to break it down into training and performance. So, training is the techniques we're doing on the cushion, which is mostly of course, introverted, right? We're having to just work um, from our side. Uh, performance is daily life. We don't get to repeat it, and it mostly consists of other people. And uh, training and performance together is the full practice. So uh, they, in the Bodhisattva practice, they do complement each other, and they can uh, make the journey uh, have a deeper and in a sense, faster. There are some people that um, are uh, very interesting people um, who uh, haven't, or we don't think they've had a history of a lot of social contact and they haven't had human teachers. So, um, of course, uh, you know, Talopa, uh, who uh, gave the teachings to Naropa, the Gandhi's Mahamudra. Um, his uh, teachings came through Vajadara, through visionary, and um, maybe didn't hang out with a lot of people. And uh, uh, even though, uh, of course, Guru Rinpoche received many teachings, we also consider Guru Rinpoche was uh, the lotus born, right? So there's a sense of self-realization there, which points out to the uh, self-cognizing nature of mind, right? Um, <clears throat> but uh, then there are also uh, some people uh, who are very involved uh, in what I'd call daily life, which is very spontaneous, because you can't repeat a moment, right? But in training, you can repeat a practice, you can repeat a, a sadhana. So they don't have appeared to have uh, done uh, a lot of meditation, uh, but uh, you know, they have, they have come to, or they come through realization, um, uh, through interaction with others or uh, uh, just an interaction with the teacher, right? So, um, but most of us are kind of uh, uh, in the uh, middle of the bell curve. So we need to do a lot of solo practice training. Um, and then we need to get out there and um, creatively engage with others, right? We need to do both, and that's a full practice. God. It goes faster that way, but uh, there's always exceptions, right? God. So when, uh, uh, these, <laughs> so back in the day, uh, when I could actually have interviews with um, Trungpa Rinpoche, 
I would ask these kind of questions. I was, I was the annoying person that said, you know, I, why do we have to do so much meditation? Uh, and, you know, aren't there some people that are just enlightened, you know, hoping that I was one of those, right? Um, and uh, he said, you know, when I was in Britain, um, I was, he was just walking along the Thames or something. Uh, and he just said he came upon a gentleman that was uh, uh, completely enlightened. Um, Britisher, you know, um, who hadn't done any, um, you know, particular, obviously, Dharma practice at all. We we would call such a person like a Pratyeka Buddha, right? Uh, like that. And um, uh, Rinpoche actually engaged him in conversation and uh, said, you know, well, I uh, just wanted to meet you, sir. <laughs> what, how, how are you doing? And, you know, just said his British, you know, the guy just said, well, I, I just seem to be happy most of the time, you know. <laughs> no particular problems. I'm just happy, you know. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he went on his way, right? So, um, uh, you know, there is personal effort that we have to put into developing ourselves, but we also have to recognize that uh, the, um, the fundamental uh, elements and nature of awareness uh, are are going on um, uh, without uh, personal involvement like that. <laughs> Thank you, Lana. Yeah. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> so uh, line thrower and Donna Darge and um, uh, uh, you know, people listening from different uh, groups in America, you know, so um, uh, I'm interested in uh, uh, having uh, new vision statements made for uh, Lion's Roar. Um, that uh, reflect uh, the need to become more socially engaged and ones that reflect how we're actually uh, doing our Dharma practice. So um, at this point, I'd, instead of just uh, doing it kind of anonymously, um, uh, I thought it might be good for people to, um, uh, if they have a statement they want to make that's in accord with Dharma that um, maybe we could uh, find a space to uh, post those. Um, I realize that, you know, there's still uh, a big container of Dharma of uh, peace and nonviolence. So, uh, and uh, uh, doing things with awareness, but um, I'm interested to hear from people that uh, how they would like to, if you were to state your Dharma practice to others and what uh, you, you could be doing uh, in society, I'd like to hear about that. And then uh, maybe maybe some of these will have to be edited for length or content, but uh, I'd rather have uh, a variety of um, visions that have a, a resemblance rather than uh, one uh, just one vision, and I'm curious what people's, uh, if you have a response to that out in uh, uh, video land. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so, I don't know, Morris, are you saying yes or no? I'm saying I don't fully understand. Do we want to uh, project some positive uh, Buddha nature or bodhicitta to the world at large and find a way of doing that? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think it's important, you know, if we say uh, we'd like as a group or even as individuals to become more involved doing this or that, 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 um, uh, the person um, proposing the vision also takes some responsibility, you know, to uh, 
helping that about, right? Because sometimes when you yeah. have anonymous, uh, anonymous mission and vision statements, um, it's kind of like, well, someone else is just doing it or uh, the temple's doing it. There is no such thing as the temple as an existing entity, right? <laughs> you know, it's like the temple is doing it. So our lines are doing, you know, so it's going to come down to, well, so-and-so is very much interested in environmental issues, so much interested in, um, you know, nonviolence issues, so much interested in diversity and feminist issues, you know, so uh, it, it's important to me to uh, uh, not have that anonymous um, uh, so that um, maybe part of this is uh, uh, I'm psychologically protecting myself, so uh, you don't come, you don't come, mm -hmm. oh, Lamala, you had a vision statement and you haven't done anything about blah, blah. So, <laughs> so we, you know, we, we could have uh, vision statements that do reflect lines are at large, but then people have um, their own, uh, you know, they have their name on it, right? So just like, um, the poetry wall, um, we need more poetry for the poets here. Um, that takes a lot of guts to write a poem, put your name on the poem and put it on the wall, doesn't it? You know, so uh, I always applaud poets as, um, you know, having some guts and uh, anybody that's actually gone to, um, uh, you know, poetry nights and gotten up and read their poetry, that's uh, making a lion's roar, right? <laughs> so uh, it's like that. We're, we're willing to express ourselves and uh, our understanding as far as it goes, and uh, we're willing to own it and follow through on that, something like that. What do you think, Morris? Well, I don't know how much guts it takes, but it's, it's nice because it's both action and... Um, um, Manifesting the Dharma in action and also saying something clearly publicly. It's the, yeah. those two things. It's the, the, the saying something and doing something. So many visions are aspirations. You know, no one's perfect. So, um, uh, you know, we could have, uh, you could say we, we aspire towards, uh, you know, economic um fairness, we aspire towards being kind to animals and maybe not eating them or something, you know, recognizing that uh, maybe not everybody is involved in that or not everybody is uh, able to do something. But uh, so it's hard to have, but I think we can do it to have vision and action uh, without blame. We can actually have Dharma mm. without blame, don't you think? We can leave the blame game. We could leave that world. We know that from 12 step, right? We can leave that world. We don't have to be in the blame world. Uh, that. Anybody else would like to say something? Uh, you know, uh, by Sandhill Crane or Pigeon is okay. Or <laughs> text me or send an email or write a letter or schedule a call. Um, that would be fun. <clears throat> it could be in poetic form. So like that. So uh, like that. Okay. Heaven. <clears throat> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, sorry, that's me. <laughs> um, uh, thank you for the talk, Lama. Um, um, I really appreciate all that, um, the different things covered. Um, just uh, something I just wanted to throw out. Um, you know, I'm not sure if I'm a Buddhist. I'm not sure if I have a Dharma or whatever. And but like the one reason I'm I still keep coming back um, is you know that idea of you know a Shambhala community in Sacramento. Um, I think that is something that I can 100% get behind and a lot of other people can too. And um, um, the, the, the question I had is, um, it's kind of a specific one because one of the ways that I've been investigating is like 
comparing it between like my past experiences with being a Protestant and uh, I'm wondering, does Buddhism have any kind of like great commission, like go forth and make disciples? <laughs> like, I was just wondering if, if there's anything similar. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, the Buddhist said, go forth for the welfare of the world. Yeah, definitely. So uh, the, the important part with, with uh, Buddha Dharma uh, is uh, we just teach, right? So we have to be very skillful in our use of language, very patient and very energetic because we can't convert people by killing them. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, or enslaving them, right? We have we have to just uh, teach, and you know, all we can do is speak to someone's intelligence. Yeah. But definitely, definitely, we're we're very uh, uh, Buddhism is very active oriented. So, uh, I did travel beyond India, of course, and uh, here at Lions Roar, I'm very interested in. Um, both, uh, you know, secular and and lineage dharma like that. So uh, I'm, you know, interested in having uh, both go on at the same time, because mm -hmm. just like uh, uh, the story I was telling about, Trung uh, Paramshay's British friend, um, uh, it, it's it's the insight into the nature of awareness that makes a difference and. Uh, this empty, open, luminous awareness doesn't come with any label on it. It doesn't actually, it doesn't say empty, open, luminous awareness either. It definitely doesn't say now you're in Buddhist land, right? No one owns it. And that's the real lion's roar. Uh, it, we are it in the sense we're totally connected and that's um, who we are. But um, if Americans and the world and aliens and whoever can wake up the fact that uh, identity doesn't equal ownership. You see, that's the human failing: is identity turns into ownership, and instead of into compassion. So uh, our identity is actually interdependence, like that. So uh, you know, generally Buddhists are quietly enthusiastic, um, but uh, part of uh, much of the Bodhisattva vows uh, are. If you can help, you must help. If you if you can help and you refuse, you're you're breaking uh, bodhisattva vow. So you can be a happy helper. <laughs> Hope that's uh, useful for you, Kevin. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. So you don't have to be. Uh, you know, becoming a lineage part is is meaning you know like. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's more of a uh, making a commitment to carry forth, right? So from a secular point of view, a little bit like um, a little bit like psychotherapy, which by and large is secular. You know, you say, well, I'm deciding to con do treatment or discontinue treatment, and it's kind of on me, and you're not thinking like, what's my therapist going to do after I leave, or how to do that, you know, but... Um, and lineage dharma, it means like we're trying to uh, carry on and uh, help continue uh, an awake lineage. So we we take responsibilities that um, you know normally you know we wouldn't take, right? So uh, uh, right now, like I, I I had a fun time at Middlebury College, uh, but I don't feel particularly responsible to um, send the money to continue. First of all, they have a huge endowment. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I'd rather send money to PLU where Sabrina went to school because the teeny, uh, but I have a, a commitment to uh, the temple and Dharma and the lineage like that. So it's a per that personal sacred connection like that. But uh, the two intersect, don't you think? So you oh, can yeah. have like a religious. We can have a religious devotion to um, uh, things that people would normally think is secular. You know, we can. So it, the words can be blurred. You know, you can say uh, strong 
something to saving animals and creating healthy environment and you're not doing religious rituals or praying to gods or something like that. You just have a, a real uh, devotion and commitment uh, that has love and compassion with it. So uh, that, that would have a sacred aspect, but it doesn't look religious from conventional forms and organizations like that. It just helps to be organized. It helps to, uh, for the IRS to give us nonprofit status because we need and appreciate deeply the donors that uh, continue to be so generous uh, and we depend upon. So um, I'm just going to segue into my um, a little bit fundraising talk. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the Sangha here has been incredibly generous, not, not only has allowed us to, um, you know, continue to stay open, um, but uh, through the generosity of board members and Sangha members and everybody, uh, we've been able to do uh, a lot of improvements on uh, the temple building and improvements on the garden and um, keep in touch with uh, our friends and teachers around the world and then take further steps of doing the video and um, you know, publishing works like uh, Kalachakra Press and publishing talks and creating a special Tara shrine, uh, putting that together. So uh, in addition, just keeping the lights on, we've been able to create uh, new Buddha fields and structures. So uh, a shout out to like all of you for doing that. Really, it's incredible. But uh, I'm involved in very secular things too. Middle Way Health and Middle Way Health Foundation are kind of secular, but uh, I'm totally committed to those and um, totally excited about um, the uh, documentary called Jude the Lionheart uh, that uh, Autumn is putting together. Is that so? Autumn, are you still doing that? Maybe, maybe she's yes, yes, I'm still here. Uh, Still doing yeah, that. Yeah. I'm going to be doing it for the next year and a half, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you were still doing it. That was that was your entrance. <laughs> so you want to say something about that? Um, well, Judah, the, the Lionheart is a documentary film that I'm making about a little boy who has uh, congenital heart defects. And he's had three heart surgeries so far, and he's got another one scheduled in March. Um, and there's a lot of Dharma themes that go along with that. Um, you know, the idea of impermanence and living when you don't know if that person you love is going to stay present in your life or not. Um, so it's really a story about a mother's love. And um, I don't know. It's... It, there's a lot I can say about it, but there's a website and there's a Facebook group and lots of good stuff where you can learn more about it. And I'm really grateful to have Lama Jimpa supporting Judah the Lionheart. It means a lot to me. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, uh, we're not just doing things uh, here. Uh, at Dona Darge, the temple building and grounds, but um, Karen's putting a lot of work into her Carmichael house to uh, create the ability for us to do retreats there and to create um, a retreat house so that people can do solo retreats in a safe and supportive setting, which is just incredible. Complete shout out. Thank you for doing that. You know. Um, the necessity for doing solar retreats is strong. Uh, we do need to sometimes be alone with our own thoughts and then, uh, but at the same time safe. So uh, it's very sacred property. We can do uh, a Dzogchen retreat there, a Mahamudra retreat there. And so uh, Karen's putting time, energy, money and commitment. So thank you for doing that. It's a big deal. Yeah, big deal. Thank you. Or, or you can do a Kala Chakra retreat there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's what yeah. I'm going to do. Uh, okay. We'll do it. So uh, the big vision, you know, it's like uh, Kala Chakra, uh, as far as Tantra goes, is uh, most comprehensive um, when it talks about society. Um, 
uh, from the inner world, of course, uh, Nuya Garva Tantra is very extensive. Uh, uh, but first, we're going to start with Kala Chakra. Is that okay? But maybe eventually Dirk will get uh, will wade into uh, find teachers to come to talk about Nuya Garva Tantra. What do you think? Yeah. So some tantras, are good. <laughs> yeah, some tantras like uh, Root Tantra and Nima are very, uh, very visionary and uh, internal, uh, which is essential, not ultimately internal, but that's where Kalachakra is a very uh, extroverted tantra, you see. That's why Dalai Lama gives it a lot. And we talk about Shambhala and actually building a uh, compassionate, enlightened community. So, uh, or building community, uh, the color chakra is very uh, important um, for building uh, awareness and developing certainty into who we are and uh, liberation. Uh, we must develop enough uh, merit to do the Dzogchen practices. Okay, deal? All right, we, we should uh, end with um, prayers, right? <clears throat> Thank you, Rama. Yeah. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings, without exception, into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel, Bodhicitta, that has not arisen, arise and grow. And may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful, Chinwezi, Tenzin Gyatso. Please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast constructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of optimist compassion. Nanjishri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losangrakpa, I make requests at your holy feet. We do um, this spring uh, another animal blessing and also do like uh, an animal um, uh, liberation. Uh, that would be fun to do that. Um, uh, I used to do a lot of animal, uh, a lot of animal liberation with um, uh, Choji Rinpoche and, and Marin. Uh, we did a lot of fish liberation. Um, uh, uh, and I just have a story that uh, we did a big fish liberation into the bay. And uh, then everybody uh, came back uh, for lunch. And ironically, somebody had um, cooked a whole bunch of salmon. <laughs> so <laughs> it was kind of like a disconnect. Wait, should we eat it or not? You know. So uh, maybe that's kind of a koan for you guys. Like, OK, what, what would you do? <laughs> you know, but we'll see. OK, good to see everybody. Uh, oh yeah, um, please. Not to today me. is Guru Rinpoche Day. Yes. And so at at five o'clock your time, I'm going to do a shower blessing practice. So anybody who would like to join me on that, if you email me or text me, uh, here I'll I'll put my email here if you want to do it. I'll send you a link so that we can do it together. Otherwise, I'll just do it. Uh, I you know so. As we become more organized and we have uh, the staff and uh, uh, people that know how to do it, like Dirk, we, we should be doing, you know, regular uh, Gurimshe Day and um, protector practice and Dakini practice, you know. That's just something that a large organization can do. But uh, I haven't pressed it on people because, um, you know, we, we, we've been a small group. so. Uh, you know, thank you for sponsoring that. Mipam Shower of Blessings, really beautiful text. 
Uh, and uh, that will be uh, really wonderful. Thank you for leading that. Because that means that's eight o'clock your time, right? Uh, yes. I should also say, if you if you do want to do it, it would be good if you could just offer, a, you know, a beverage or a, some food or something also during the practice. We'll do a short soak with it. Yeah, but it's so, not a long practice. We'll do a short version. Yeah. So, you know, Dirk, please tell people how to set that up correctly, and that'll be helpful. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, if you have a shrine or something, or you could even use uh, like a side table. Just something to to place the op. It, it, it should be something new, something fresh, not you know leftovers. Um, it could be a beverage. It, it could be really anything that you would think would be good to eat or to drink that you can offer. Uh, and the lineages that I learned it in, we always offered things that I'm not going to tell you to offer. <laughs> but, but just it's, the main thing is the intention, is my understanding. So. The, the, the pure the pure intention of the pure offering and ultimately you're going to eat it uh, but you'll also uh, want to offer like the remainders of it outside to uh, the local spirits and the animals yes thank you perfect all right everybody all right thanks for listening thanks for attending ciao thank you ciao. yeah i love you guys all right Thank you, Lama. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Boris. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lama. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, for being Umze. Thank you.